What's up you guys? This is Devin with Century Effects Studios back with another video and today we're going to be talking about the Megyn Kelly interview of Tara Reid. We all know that this is a super trending subject. This is probably one of the biggest interviews of all time. I just want to get into the actual video aspect of it. The cinematography, the lighting, the composition, framing, all that stuff. I'm not choosing sides. I'm not saying who did this, who did what, who's right, who's wrong. I'm not getting into those types of politics, quite literally. I'm not trying to get into those types of politics. So that's my little disclaimer for the comment section below. So let's get right into Tara Reid's angle. Now Tara Reid, much like like most interviews right now in the pandemic, we are very, very far away. So that means that we're probably using telephoto lens or some mid telephoto length, 50 millimeters, 60, 70, 80, 100 millimeters. We probably have some super 35 sensors we're talking about. So add that additional crop factor. You're gonna be a little bit tighter than you usually would. So I would say about 70 millimeters would get you close to about an 80 millimeter. I'm not doing the exact math, but you get what I'm saying. Every lens that you put on the camera is gonna be a little bit tighter than full frame we got this tight angle here and you got this black thing in the background i don't think that's eh, i wouldn't necessarily frame it that way or try to move that black thing out of the background for tara reed's angle but nevertheless it's a decent shot most people won't complain or even notice anything like that there is a light above the head there and there's another light probably lighting her from the back, somewhere separating her from the background, probably on her hair because I see a lot of tones, a lot of different tones in her hair. And usually with these CMOS sensors and digital sensors, you get really distinct values unless or contrasty values unless you put some lighting there to separate it. So everything has to be deliberate and everything has to be intentional to get the look that you want. That's why these digital cameras are so great because they can show you so much and give you so so much dynamic range. With the Tara Reed angle, I get one light coming over here, which is pretty standard for most interviews. They probably have like an angle bracket or a C stand or something like that. And they have one back here. You have this type of scene around Tara Reed where one side of her face is pretty lit. The other side of her face is kind of dark, so it gives you a kind of this moody type of setting instead of there being a little bit of a, a lighter light ratio. So basically, you would have a little bit more feel on the shadow side and things of that nature, especially with her hair right there probably blocking the main light or any light hitting her face. She got some hair right here. And so she looks a little bit moody based off of this entire scene, and there's a little bit of one little thing in the background that I would probably have shifted. But nevertheless, it's a decent shot. Other than I think the highlights are a bit, bit, as if not just a little bit bright. The highlights are a little bit bright for that scene. I would say two thirds of a stop maybe, or, or, or a third of a stop, it's, it's pretty bright. So that's the Tara Reed angle, kind of bright, moody, has something in the background, but I'm not like saying this is bad. I'm just saying what I see based off of what's going on in the interview. Now let's go to the Megyn Kelly shot, and this is where all of the drama happens. And this is essentially a histogram. Now, no, this is not a vector scope in anything professional, I know this is a crude drawing, but when you have these big cameras, cameras over $1,000, $2,000, $10,000, they have these scopes and different features to allow you to see the exposure, not just how it comes from the screen, but how you would accurately get it from like a scientific perspective you get this graph you get a whole big graph and then inside post-production you get vector scopes and all these different things to help you nail everything so you won't have an excuse now like i said i'm not perfect this is my channel i'm getting used to these i'm learning about these things that's why i'm bringing this to you today but here will be the average histogram the dark's on this side, the bright's on this side. The mid-tones in the center kind of self-explanatory. You can kind of understand where we're going here. I actually ran these images through Lightroom. That I actually took screen caps of the video, ran through Lightroom, and this is kind of what I got here. I didn't really get too many dark values, probably because the darkest values are their hair, and their hair is being illuminated by a hair light, of course. But as we go up here, we get this spike in the highlights. I'm talking about past, almost just a little bit past what Lightroom can show you. I'm saying if Lightroom gives you this value, then I wonder what their cameras were telling them. We're, we're peaking in the highlight area. We're going over and that's it for that. Other than the technical stuff, let's get right into Megyn Kelly's view. What you see with Megyn Kelly is very, very interesting, to say the least. We got one light coming overhead, but when I look deep into the catch lights in her eyes, 
I can actually see two lights coming from one side and another light coming from another side. So that means we got one, two, three lights either beneath her or right beside her because she's sitting down and then one light coming over from overhead. I understand we're social distancing. We got six feet, but that's very dramatic for an interviewer to have so much light, especially since you're interviewing someone else. If anything, the light needs to be on the person you're interviewing, but I know this is a sensitive subject. You don't want to put a lot of lights on the interviewee, but at the same time, none of her interviews are like this. Not in the past with other companies like Fox or anything like that. All of them are lit pretty straightforward. Nothing has this overabundance of light. Like I'm talking about, she has no shadows, no shadows under the chin, barely seen. Barely, you can barely see shadows until she turns her face and you might get a slight hint of shadow, which means everything under her is just filled with light. This is glamor lighting for photography. Clown shell lighting is when you have light overhead and you have light filling them at the bottom there and then, or you might have a reflector. So we got all these lights around Megan Kelly. And then on top of that, she probably has a backlight or a hair light somewhere over her hair. I know she got a hair light. So that's one hair light. And she got one light coming over top of her head. One, two, three lights at the bottom. She got like five, six lights. And I know she has another light. You see like this red light behind me. She probably has another small, small little yellow light rimming and, and giving her like there's a lot of light there and my brain is going like wait wait what wait why would they do something like this now i'm not here to tell you guys this is right or wrong i'm just saying understand exactly what you see and how you're seeing it because it tells you a lot about videography it tells you a lot about photography when you can dissect the lighting situation and then you get to what they're trying to do and why they're trying to do it. But as far as the entire scene, you got Megan Kelly lit up like a glamour model. <laughs> you got Tara Reid in this moody esque, uh, this moody esque type of, uh, it's, it's really moody. I'm curious to see what you guys think. This is what I broke it down. Do you see any more lights? Do you see anything else that I didn't see? I also saw some orangey type of undertone coming from Megan's lighting. Like I'm talking like, orange undertones as if they put like an orange or CTO gel on something down there. And now under the, she's looking like they trying to give her like the goddess glamor glow of all time. But I have never seen an interviewer <laughs> lit like this. As a matter of fact, if anything, you would probably want to do that to the actual interviewee to give them this, you know, lit up spotlight look, but they didn't do that this time. And I understand that Megan has her new channel, but if you look at her previous videos on her channel, everything is lit exactly the same for everybody. So why now is this different? Why now do they want to <laughs> make this entire lighting scene tremendously different? And I think other people might see it as much as I do, but I don't want to put words in other people's mouths, but there's definitely a different respect given in lighting to each person you might be saying to yourself at the end of the day Devin, it doesn't even look like they're trying to do that on purpose well i actually disagree with you. when you put multiple lights in a situation you're trying to achieve a certain effect i'm Devin with century effect studios guys thanks for watching the video what do you think is it tailored to make you feel some type of way or is this what do you think i don't know tell me what you think in the comments below and i'll see you at the next video